steers me of hope, believe, and give, truly surmises what my family life has been for me. It is not simply giving blindly, but it must be a giving that is meaningful to the recipient. So to me, that is what it means to ignite equality. The first and most important thing I needed to do was to listen. This is often the case with my children. I learned quite fast after my first two that some standard rules didn't work all the time because each child is different from the other. As my family grew from two children to four children, it became overwhelmingly true that as much as they were my children under my care and my authority, I needed to respect them as individuals. They are their own person. I do not own them. Two words come to mind, dignity and respect. Respect means to give regard to their thoughts, to their feelings, to their wishes, to their rights. Dignity means being worthy of respect. So that meant I had to acknowledge each of my children, being six years old, 13 years old, nine years old, 18 years old, or whoever they may be. I needed to respect a child, an adult, a person with special needs, or anyone else for that matter. Everyone has dignity. That is to say, they are worthy of respect. Igniting equality is to see people apart from our own experience. To have empathy, to treat someone with equality can be challenging because we need to strip ourselves from all our personal experiences and go into theirs. What is the world they live in? One of my children asked me, why did some siblings have more rewards than other siblings at the same age? I had to smile and explain that I realized that they each had a different personality, different needs, different wants. But there was also a subset of reward that I could use for all. But to be really fair, I had to truly listen to them for things that matter. They had different lenses, they had different ways of looking at things. So to treat them with equality, I needed to consider their view of the world. Values never change, but the world is consistently changing. How do we then disseminate the seeds of equality in accordance to their view of the world? For me, it is prayer and educating myself. I find my best guide comes from a disciplined prayer life. Not just limiting to Sunday Masses, but really seeking to develop a personal relationship with God through a daily purposeful prayer life. It's not just saying the rosary with your family, it's not just reading prayers, but sitting quietly with scripture and just listening in stillness and silence. Sometimes we say that we can't hear God, but I think to listen to Him, we really need to just stop talking. Another important aspect is faith education. We as Catholics, we are known to not really know our faith very much, unfortunately. So, as parents especially, we need to deepen our own faith. We need to answer the questions that we ourselves don't know, so that our children can ask us the questions and we can answer them. I think we need to read more books, get recommendations from the parish priests, from credible church leaders, I think that's important. And another compass for me is just by looking at the fruits of the Holy Spirit. This helps me confirm that at least I have a step in the right direction. Sometimes the solution doesn't come easily, but I know that I see my children act in a way that demonstrates the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. I know that at least I've taken the right step. The rest is truly a daily surrender to God. We need to learn to trust God, just like how we expect a child to trust their parents. And as we celebrate International Women's Day, I want to call to mind that women have cradled humanity since the beginning of time. Therefore, all women have that instinct to nurture, from a high-flying CEO to a toddler. We as women are also able to see injustices around us a little more easily because women have grown up with it. 
whether or not you realize it or not. We have the natural ability to combine reason and compassion in solutions. Therein lies our strength, irregardless of whether you're a mother, daughter, wife, or a consecrated woman. We are therefore challenged to be the mouthpiece for those who are overlooked, seeking just and compassionate solutions. It is not about power. It is not about being better than men. It is not a competition. It is about complementing the strengths of men with strengths of women, so that we come about working towards a balanced solution. The beauty of God is seen in the nature of a man and woman. For God, men and women are created in his image and likeness. They are totally one equal being. Jesus came in the image of a human being to experience the fullness of life that is entrusted to everyone in the world. The beauty in the world we enjoy is the human person. See the way each person is created. The skin color, language, culture, creative ways, uniqueness, and I can go on and on. I truly believe that God has created each person for a purpose and he made it possible. God is a great creative artist. We have nothing to blame or compare. For God, every person are important and equal and they need to be respected for who they are. At times, it is we who destroy the dignity of people. We divide them into categories. Low class, high class, rich, poor, white, black, brown. For me, human dignity is about seeing Christ in every person. Human dignity is knowing that each human being is a beautiful creation of God, worthy of respect, love, and charity. I am being a religious. My role is very important, and I must be able to accept persons as they are. At times, it is not easy to. I do struggle, but never give up. For me, each person carries a story that has yet to be heard, unfold, and be appreciated. When I put condition, that is where I fail to recognize the beauty of person. I was attached to the Bentong prison, and I was taking care of some of the lady prisoners there. Each of them are different. Some are active and alive, some are quiet, some are sad, some even the babies are with them. I always stop and ask myself, Mary, which character is important to you? For me, every person is important and I make sure that I give them the due respect. Daily coming in contact with God in prayer, the Eucharistic celebration allows me to open many areas of my life to meet person as they are. My personal experiences are real and they are my stepping stones to be able to touch the other person. Teaching the academically weak children who do not know how to read and write is not easy either but I take it as a challenge by not giving up to allow me to see progress because my passion for weak kids also teaches me to be patient and to treat them gently. Dealing with single adults are also moments of grace and sacredness and they come by way. Listening and allowing God into the situation teaches me to channel them to the right source 
when they seek for help. For me, each person, male and female, are different in many ways. They are unique and creative. I need to acknowledge and respect them as they are. As regard to who I am, the wonder of my own being is the richness of God's creative masterpiece. To all women out in the world, women, your inner beauty is your crowning glory. Your noble character is your virtue. Your eyes holds your story. Your strength as refreshing as morning dew. Believe in yourself. You have the ability to accept every person in this world, for you are uniquely lovely and life-giving.